So when we last left off, I was talking about how uh, the bulk insert can be a challenge. And I want to show you exactly what I mean. So let's go back to that original text file that we that I kind of led off this section, uh, the 16 rows that had the department information in it. This is just FYI, straight out of SQL Server. I generated this from the AdventureWorks database. Uh, I just used the human resources department and all I did was do a quick export using the data flow task which we'll do in a couple of videos from now. So really nothing fancy. I, di I didn't <clears throat> hand type all of this and I didn't do anything too difficult to get here. Uh, you can see some inferred data types. You can maybe suggest data types that looks to be of an integer variety, string, string, and a date time, right? Okay, let's do this. Let's take this and load it up into SQL Server using bulk insert. All right, so I'm going to close out of this. And I'm going to save that package that we were working in here as data03. And I'm going to make a new package. And so this is going to be data04. And we need to kind of do the same thing. Um, we need a table that stores this information. So I'm just copying and doing this. So use, uh, learn it first. Again, hit the tab to let it complete. Create table dbo dot company department. Uh, here were the columns that we needed. So department ID is an integer. Uh, let's make that the primary key. Maybe even an identity column. Let's do that. As I want to show you, uh, let's let it start at one and increment by one and its primary key. And the name of the department, let's just make that a Unicode 256. I'll make it 255. Uh, same thing for the group name, NVARCAR 255, not null. And a modified date, this is going to be probably a date time, maybe a small date time, uh, but let's make that not null as well. And again, we have the exact same problem. If I run this twice, then I get the error. So I need to do my if exists, right? So if exists, select all from sys. Dot, um, I'll do it a different way this time. Sys.objects. I'll show you maybe a more robust defensive way of uh, doing this drop table dbo.company department uh, go so the real way that I would do this uh, there's actually several ways is where um, object ID equal object ID of here uh, company department and schema ID equals schema ID of DBO. Okay. So when I look at this, we can actually see that here is the object named company department. There's the object ID. You see the schema ID. Uh, so this would guarantee me that I am dealing with an object that's DBO.company department. Um, and if I wanted to really be more robust, I could say and type equal u. You see that a type of u is a table. And so that way, if there is a view named company department, it would not get dropped because it would have a type of v. v is in view. So now I can run this multiple times successfully. So there's our table preparation. So I'm going to come over here, use an execute SQL task. This will be uh, table prep. And again, let me save that as a file. So this will be saved as data 04. And we'll use a file here. We'll connect to the learn at first dot database, uh, dot com database, connect to the file data 04. So it's going to execute the script file 
that we just created, data 04. There is no result set. If it seems like I'm going fast, again, go watch the section on the execute SQL. Uh, now let's grab our bulk insert task. And we, same thing, let's make our connection. The destination is our SQL server. The table, because it's already been created from us running the script, is company department. Um, it is a comma separated file, so just like the last video. And our source file is data 04. Uh, no, it's um, departments, sorry. Good. Options, uh, the first row needs to be skipped because it is a data file, uh, sorry, uh, column names. Um, I'm going to leave this alone. Do you remember what I said about the enable identity insert part? Maybe, kind of, yeah, probably not. Um, I'm going to just leave it alone. So just remember that I did not change any of the defaults with respect to identity inserts. Just keep that in your head. I say OK. We run it. Loads up the table, creates the table, takes the, the bulk insert task, runs that, loads that up into the database. Okay. Now, let's go to a new thing. Sure enough, dot, wasn't it PBO? Oh, I need to refresh the cache because it just doesn't it doesn't know that I've created that new table. So I need to refresh the cache, which is the cache of objects. So DBO dot, and now you can see company department there. Uh, and sure enough, it did actually load up our data correctly. Very awesome, very cool. Uh, wasn't that much of a pain. Uh, wasn't all that difficult uh, to deal with. So what would happen, what would happen, let's come back over here. What would happen if I disabled this table prep step? Remember this was the drop table, create table? Well, the bulk insert task is going to append or attempt to append rows to the table, right? Well, if we look in the actual text file, the department IDs already are in the table. They've been loaded, right? So one, two, three. And this is the primary key. So is it going to load them again? And if so, that would cause a primary key error, right? And will that cause an error? What's going to happen? Remember, we're just going with the defaults. Let's just hit F5. Let's, let's just see. wonder what's going to happen here. Green? Well, now, what did it do? Did it dump out all of the rows in that table and then replace the contents of the table with the rows from the text file? No, it didn't do that, right? It's an insert. It's not a delete and insert. All right, well, there's only 16 rows, if you remember, in the text file, right? So how many rows are there now? Oh, 32 is a multiple of 16. What if I run it again? Forty-eight. Hmm. Okay. Now maybe we're going to see what happens with the identity column. Here are the original 16 rows with the original everything matched up. However, because department ID is an identity column and you didn't enable identity insert, it skipped the department ID column. Just trying to help. Just trying to be friendly. It skipped department ID and only added name, group name, and modified date. You see, these are all repeats. Here's engineering. So number 17 is engineering, and that makes number 33 engineering. And then I guess uh, number 40 something. No, we didn't repeat after that again. So engineering, it just repeated those rows three times. Let's re-enable this. What's going to happen now? Well, every time we execute this, it's going to delete the table, drop the table, recreate the table, and there's ever only going to be 16 rows, right? So there's 16 rows. If I go run it again, then it's going to drop the table, create the table, load up the 16 rows. and So that table prep step, sorry, was very, very important.
it created the table. But sometimes you only need to do it one time and you will just disable it in a package just as I've done here. Okay. So now I've got the 16 rows in the table. I want to do this. I want to, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to the bulk insert task and I'm going to go to the options. And do you remember our enable identity insert option? I'm going to check it this time and you will see an error. And I've told it that any error, because it's a zero that says any error, that any error occurs, it's going to cause a failure. So it's going to bomb out of this. So what it's doing, when I tell it to enable identity insert, you can actually see the error messages there. Uh, we've had a violation of the primary key. And that's because it actually looked at the value right here and said, that's the value that I'm going to put into the department ID column. But oops, there already is a department ID one. Let me see if I can do this another way. Um, I, I know I know what I can do. I got an idea. I can do this here. So I'm going to add a hundred to each of these. And I'm going to save this as data 04. Dot text. So let me go now and I'm going to change my connection manager here. So instead of departments.txt, I am going to edit that to use data 04. So that's going to be our source file. Okay. Now stay with me. Stick with me. Don't get lost. This is confusing. I'm going to go back and uncheck identity insert. Back to the default. So the question is, when I run this, is it going to load up 100, 200, 300, or is it going to load up 17, 18, 19, 20? Only one way to find out, right? We didn't get a primary key error. 17. So do you see the effect of enabling the identity insert? Very, very important if you're working with identity columns. Now I can come back over here. I can go to my bulk insert. I can tell it that I want to enable the identity insert. I can run it again because I'm not going to have any clashes. I haven't gotten to 100 already in the database table yet. And so I can run this one more time. And it's loading up the exact same things, but just with new identity columns. No primary key errors. And when we take a look now, you could see it successfully loaded with the actual values I had typed in. So I hope that clears it up. Let's take a look in the next video. I had planned on getting it in this video, but I've kind of run out of time. Um, let's take a look at format files in the next video. So I'll see you there.